and show this to you, you will give me the three practical characteristics of the kingdom of God. Whenever you see this, I may pull it up at any time. You just begin to call out. What was the first one? The body of Christ. The second one? And the third one? Authority over us. Amen. Amen. And so let's look. Let's look. Let's look. Every time, as I want to focus it, we, we want to, we got three areas, but I want to focus in on the second one, which is the needy, the needy, the needy, uh, that we are called to serve the needy. And I have found that we can't really serve the needy until we have tuned into our own neediness. And so one of the things that is important for me is that I have here is a, a book of stories of uh, I call my Philippians 419 book, which is how God has supplied all of our needs. And in here are topics of books being written according to how God has supplied all of our needs. But I don't have a book title in here from you. And so what I would like for you to do in the next one minute is to write down a topic of a book that will be written by you that will declare something about how God has supplied your needs. In two, one minute, come up with a topic of a book that you may share in just a few minutes about how God has supplied your need. 30 seconds on how God has supplied your needs. And while you're finishing that up, let me just share my topic. My topic is when I could not make sense out of nonsense, the healing power of God. When I could not make sense out of nonsense, the healing power of God. That's my title of my book. And why? Because two years ago, I had brain surgery. And at one of the points, the lowest points of my life, I only spoke gibberish because I could not make sense because of the water that had covered my brain. It did not allow for me to have balance nor the actual vocal utterance that made sense. But two years later, here I am, right here in Katy, in the front of you, declaring his glory again and declaring the honor of who he is in my life. And so he has supplied a need. So what I have come to realize now, I can understand those who have been ill over a period of time. I can help those who have been dealing with issues of illness. And I also understand uh, mental, emotional issues of people's lives. And so, we are to work on those things that God has called us from because out of our own needs will be our greatest gift to the body of Christ. Can I hear some topics now from your books as I have given you mine? Are there any topics in the house that someone would like to share uh, for the book? Yes, sir. I own the copyright to this. <laughs> All right. Um, where grace has taken me. Say it again. Where grace has taken me. Ah, where grace has taken you. Yeah. Amen. Why did you choose that? Because um, I can't fathom. I'm still trying to wrap my mind around the faithfulness, uh -huh. the provision, uh -huh. the protection of God over my life. Good, good. Ever good. since. I had an encounter with Jesus Christ. Good, good, good. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else? Wouldn't take nothing from my journey. Wouldn't take nothing from my journey now. Can you just share just a line or two as to why you have chosen that? I didn't think I'd make it. And I didn't understand what was going on. But in hindsight, God has worked everything and connected the dots and has made it much better than I ever thought it could be. Good, good, good. Praise be to God. Anyone else? Anyone else would like to share? Yes. I would call it my whose plan is it anyway? Uh. Jeremiah 29. <laughs> oh. 
All right. And would you share just a little bit why you've chosen that? Because I might plan on exactly what I think my future is going to be, mm -hmm. but God says, nope, not yet. Mm -hmm. That's not it yet. Okay. Um, and I've been reminded many times that when I can do this plan, it works a whole lot better. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else in the house want to share? Yes, sir. The book is called Dealing with Fear. Uh -huh. You want to share a bit about that? Uh, well, it's um, a revelation that God gave me in a difficult time when I was bombarded by really the fear of men. Uh -huh. And God began to tell me that the, one of the enemy's uh, biggest arsenal is a spirit called fear. Mm -hmm. And that he has not given that to me. Ah. But he has given me a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Yes, yes, yes. And if I just let the Holy Spirit take over, he has made me an overcomer. God bless and you. And I've seen that you know, come to pass. So Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. We, we, we serve our greatest gift out of our woundedness, out of our brokenness. God can use us as great servants of his based upon where we have been and our own needs. What do you think, according to so, some of you who did not say anything, what do you think, uh, at least one of you, I'm seeing my time, at least one of you, could be the gift that you would give to your community based upon what you have shared What would be the gift that you would give to those who are in need based upon what you have needed in the past? Yeah, being there, sharing my gifts, time, and talent, being there for, uh -huh. for anybody the Lord might send my way, okay. knowing that God never gives up on me. So okay. I can't give up on anybody. Praise God. Praise God. Yes, yes. Go on, go on. I will give love uh -huh. because I understand God has loved me so much. Uh -huh. And for me to, you know, um, give out that same love to good. the community. Good, 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 good. Let's, um, let, me, let me bring this to somewhat of a conclusion. Uh, by you just turning to each other, the person next to you right now. Turn next to someone. Turn and face them if you can. Don't be afraid to face them. <laughs> just turn and face them for a moment. And uh, don't give them foot attack. Give them eye contact, okay? And begin to look at them. Yeah. Yeah, because we're going to serve people of different places in their lives. And what makes them feel special is that you look at them and give them the attention that they need and let them know how special. And what I want you to do very briefly is I want you to breathe into them, what I mean the Ruach of God, to give them the breath of God, which means that you're going to breathe an encouragement into them and just say one or two things to them to let them know that they are special to God and they're special to you. So why don't you share with them at this time? As we come to a conclusion, I want you in three days, three days, three days, some of y'all still sharing, in three days, I want you to commit to serve the body of Christ where you are in a way that you have not done it before. I want you to find a radical new way to serve the body of Christ where you are in a way that you have not before. And let us close by declaring Galatians 6 and 10, which reads, Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially in those to those in the family of faith. God bless you and thank you. Wow.
Involved everybody too. Yes. How did he involve people? Like this. Uh, yeah. Asking uh, the book. Questions. questions, questions. The what assignments and all of that. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-hmm.
And um, I was just thinking, I want to hear him again. <laughs> so now we're all in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the standard has been set high. <laughs> I was going to say, though, um, the topic of the day, could, could it also affect the liveliness in the room? There are some topics you can't, you can't preach charismatically. <laughs> Well, we're not talking about preaching charismatic. Remember, this isn't preaching, this okay. is teaching. Yeah. And yes, it doesn't have to be charismatic, <clears throat> but if you can find an activity or uh, even the simple things of having somebody read Bible verses, mm. that's involved. That keeps people awake because they're, okay, I'm ready with my Bible verse. If you've got five or six Bible verses and people sitting there, sitting on the edge of their seat because they know they're going to be called on to read these. Right then they are with you, they are focused, they are involved. Okay. So if, if we're not all gifted in the same way to be dynamic, and you're right, not every session is going to lend itself to something real exciting to do, but every session has something that you can find to, to involve you. I, I think I, I just want to say that it's that's his... You, you know, uh, people have different uh, style. The, the, the most important thing is connecting with the people and taking them with you where you want to take them. Like uh, Miss Diane, when she teaches, she's really calm, but you connect. Some people are charismatic, you connect. Whatever connects the, you to the people with your personality type. That's why you can use your, your personality type, you know, in whichever way to your advantage to connect the people, you know, and take them where you want to. Excellent point. Everybody's different. Don't try to be somebody That's else. That's right. Be who you are. <laughs> because if you try to be somebody else, you, you can be. if you try to be somebody else, it comes across the face. Yeah. So don't tell me to stand up when you get there. <laughs> yeah, I have two, I have three younger sisters, but two of them are only um, 11 months apart. And Sandy is a natural jokester, always was growing up. Linda would try to tell jokes like Sandy, and they would go, mm -hmm. what was that? <laughs> was that, oh, oh, I'm sorry, it was funny. And poor Linda, she was always so frustrated. <laughs> Next up is Yolanda. Back. Be sure you uh, finish writing up your evaluation or feedback form and send it down to Joe. I know that we have been running and we have so many things that are going on in our lives that I would just like for us to take a moment as we begin to hear the word of God, because I do believe that the word of God is a path unto our feet and it lights the way for us. So if we could just take a moment just to talk to God and ask the Holy Spirit to help you to understand and hear the word that he has for you today. Now, if you would just breathe in God's peace and breathe out your cares. I love breath prayers. Let's do that one more time. Breathe in God's peace and breathe out your cares. There was a bleak and cold day in which George Washington stepped out of his headquarters. It was so cold that he drew on his great coat 
and pulled the collar up to his neck and pulled his hat and shielded his face from the cold blowing wind. He walked down the road to where the soldiers were fortifying a camp and no one recognized him because he was all covered up. In fact, the commander of the army was not recognized at all. He came across a group of soldiers who were under command of a corporal and they were building logs and blocks and they were all filled with these logs and blocks in this cold weather trying to put it together and here is this corporal barking orders with them and to them up with it he cried now all together push and they were trying desperately to push this final log up the top of the crest and each time they tried at the last moment the thing would fall back up with it he said what's wrong with you guys and they were a tug again and again, and the log came crashing down again. They weren't quite strong enough to do what it was that needed to be done. And for the third time, the corporal again comes barking at them, and Washington himself goes up to them and exerts all his strength and says, let me help you. The exhausted men were able, with the help of Washington, to get the final log up there on the crest. People begin to wonder, who is this unknown soldier? And at this point, he turned to the corporal. And Washington said to the corporal, why don't you help your men with the heavy lifting? They needed another hand. And the corporal replied, don't you see who I am? I'm the corporal. And George Washington said, indeed. And then he opened his coat up and said, I am the commander in chief. <laughs> and the next time a log is too heavy for your men to lift, sin for me. Mm. To me, this is a great example of servant leadership. Mm. The corporal was all full of himself. And it's an amazing analogy of our own lives in a way as we think about it. Because sometimes we get so full of ourselves that we don't realize that we are still servants of the Most High God. And that the most highest position that we could ever have is when we are surrendering to the Most High God. Sometimes we think our positions are really important, but really the Bible says he that would be the least of them is really the greatest. As we begin our lesson for today, um, I am building on the, the leader's foundation. And I brought these stones because we will be using them later. But I wanted you to get a vi visual of foundations because the stones lay the foundation for us. And since we're talking about foundation stones, I'm continuing with the foundation stone number four, which is called Serving in the Kingdom. It is found on page 8-8. When I think about the idea of foundation, I start thinking about support. And we find out that Jesus is not only the origin of our lives, but he is the foundation. And he is the one that supports the church. He is the foundation. Jesus is the one that gives it its shape, its form, he determines the plan for each stone. In fact, Psalm 118.22 says that the stone that the builder rejected has become the chief cornerstone. How many of us have been rejected? How many of us were told that we would never be anything or anyone? And but for the grace of God, he picked us up and he renewed us. And he breathed into us new life and new breath. And so now we are new creations in Christ. We are going to focus uh, specifically on two major challenges to serving in the kingdom. We learned in the last session that we are to serve the body, the needy, and the authority placed over us. When we begin to talk about serving 
servanthood, servant leadership. What have been some of your major challenges as you have tried to serve in the kingdom? Anyone? Attitudes of people. Anyone else? What has been your major challenge? Just one. Um, lack of commitment from the people. From the people. Okay. Anyone else? Yes. Faithfulness. Faithfulness of the people? Yeah. Okay. One more? It's interesting that most of you, in fact, all of you, focused on external challenges. Challenges that didn't involve you, but involved people outside of you. Why do you think that we did not name any personal challenges? What did you say? We think we got it. Okay. Anyone else? Selfish. The first major challenge to serving are our own personal challenges. Everybody here has a personal challenge or two or three in this room. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. And just as Jesus and the disciples argued about which one would be the greatest among them in Luke 22, 24, we also seek to be the greatest because of our sinful natures. Pride is one of the main challenges that we always have to fight as leaders. Being a Christian leader does not automatically erase the presence of selfishness. I, me, myself, we have slogans and commercials in the city, in our culture today, have it your way, do yourself a favor today, you deserve a break today. Our inner self does not want to dump God entirely. We just want to keep him at a comfortable distance just so he can make a little difference in our lives. And Jesus is asking us to take a different path. He has given us a new paradigm of servanthood, if you would. Prideful people never seem secure in their self-evaluations. They require a community to idolize them. That's where they get their glory and affirmation from because pride seeks to exalt itself above God and above others. You must admit that humility doesn't come naturally. When babies are born, they're very arrogant, very self-centered, and when they get to be two, it's me, 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 I want, I want. And often when I look at us and even myself, I see some of those same attitudes. I believe that the core issue here is a poor self-image. And a poor self-image will always mask itself in pride. So as I was thinking about this, that without a healthy ego, without our confidence that God is in us, on us, in our side, and pulling for us, we become fragile, easily bruised, counterproductive people. In this society, this world challenges our serving. This world's culture is opposite of everything that the Bible teaches us. Our educational system and the culture has influenced our thinking towards others. We are taught to be independent. We're taught that you don't need nobody. You teach our kids that you don't need them, you just do the best that you can and be who you are. We fear for our reputations because of what others may say about us or who we are. And so one of the major challenges as a servant, as a servant leader, is our own personal challenges. Mm -hmm. The second major challenge, and the final one, is the ability to serve in a world that challenges everything that we know. Mm -hmm. A society and a world, it is a challenge. One of the values of our society is the pursuit of power. In fact, leaders must resist the lure or the enticement to gain control and power over people. It seems that in this world, we find people just doing whatever it takes to get above and over and on people. We as leaders must not influence and impose our power or our will on anyone at the expense of relationships and feelings. 
We cannot adopt the world's values. The enemy's schemes is to tempt us to use others to gain positions. And believe it or not, it happens in the ministry. The world society seeks the attainment of prestige. It's as if it is all up to them to make it. And so I have found that the enemy will use people to exalt you. People will set you up and tell you, you ought to get a church. You ought to do this. You're good. And, the, and God hasn't told you anything, but people will exalt you and get you in places and then leave you. Amen. I have found that to be true. As we come to our conclusion, several authorities on servant leadership have suggested that to learn servanthood, we need to undergo a journey of self-discovery, of personal transformation. We can't take people anywhere where we haven't gone ourselves. And if God hasn't done a mighty work in us, if we can't be real and honest and authentic about our own stuff, then how can we get somebody else to be more faithful or to be more committed as we examine our own selves? Finally, servanthood is all about humility. In my life as a minister, I have tried to be a servant, and I ain't going to lie to you, it has been the hardest journey, the most difficult, the most painful the most humiliating journey. But humility comes from humiliation, not from the choice to be better than or better than. If you have not suffered, then you really cannot humble yourself. We work and we minister and we serve from our wounds. But some of us, due to our own arrogance, try to avoid being wounded. We act as if we were never, even as servants, as God's people, as God's ministers, we act as if we've never been through anything and we can't identify with anybody. But a broken leader is probably the best leader in the world to be able to impact the lives of people. So as a take home, what I want you to do is I want each of you to come and get a stone. And I want you to pick up the stone here that represents you as a servant. I want you to pick up the stone, not that represents what you do out on the outside, but you in the inside. You can come now. And as you're coming to pick the stone, I want you to take it with you to remind you that I may not be the servant yet that God wants me to be, but he's not through with me. And this will remind you to be a servant. As a matter of fact, I want you to choose this week to live fully as a servant in your family, in your church, on your job. I just want you to go out of your way to be a servant this week, to humble yourselves. God bless you and thank you. Woo! Oh, I am she blessed. Knocked, <laughs> she knocked the ball out of the ball. <laughs> I am blessed. That was good. She's a professional leader. I think overall impression. The, the, the invite, how did she first get our attention? The story. The story of what? The breath. Mm -hmm. the, the breath prayer, the breath prayer um, was a good place to start. It's a gentle gathering, and then bam, she goes into the George Washington story. And so we're with her. Anything else? <coughs> it's done. Hmm? It's done. Before. Oh, okay, she put the bowl down, and then you go, okay, what's she going to do? Yeah. All right. So there's nothing like leaving somebody wondering all the time. I know there's a purpose here. It's going to happen. Okay. Um, did she inform us? Yes, she did. Okay. She told us what? What she What page she was going to be on, and... Mm -hmm. 
And she made. And she laid it on the other foundation of the DNA. Yeah. Yeah. She make, made reference of the previous. She reference to the previous one. That's mm -hmm. that's a very good thing that you've referenced what they've already learned because it connects it. And she also related the story to her topic. Mm-hmm. Savvy. Yeah, definitely. That Washington was yes. a certain. Yes, she leader. related that, that that story along with the, her topic. And when she. Um, in, uh, when she informed us about the topic, she said, serving in the kingdom. But when she was explaining, she talked about serving in the kingdom and challenges um, to serving in the kingdom. I think that was remarkable. Mm -hmm. uh, she, she, I was she, so uh, glad because I was, I was hoping that y'all would answer the way you did. Because if you had no, <laughs> I'd have to go a whole nother way. Yeah. But I knew, I suspected that that's usually what we do when we talk about our challenges in ministry. And those are valid challenges. Right. But we don't go here. Yeah. You know, people tend to ask people tend to ask questions of yes or no or single word answers because you can pretty well predict what you're gonna get. You ask open ended questions, you can't always predict what you get. And it, you also can't always control the person that's just bubbling over so much on the topic that they're taking the next 10 minutes of your presentation. And when that happens, you have to be prepared to kind of gently thank them after a comment or two and just turn and invite somebody else to make a comment before you move on. But controlling the person who wants to take over is as hard as getting somebody to contribute and a lifetime when it stretches longer and longer, <laughs> and longer and longer and longer and longer becomes more uncomfortable. I guess my temptation sometimes, and I, I saw what you told us yesterday that we gravitate to what our learning style mm -hmm. is. My temptation sometimes, and I do do this when I teach, is I'll say, if you all will allow me to teach for X amount of time, then I will open it up mm -hmm. to questions because sometimes I cannot get anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know that that's right, but <laughs> well, it is right because you are the person in the teaching position. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you let them go a little bit and say, if you'll just let me summarize what you said. And so that we can move on. And I try not to make them wait till the very end. Mm -hmm. I try to, you know, say, okay, now, are there any questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how, what were her illustrations? Pretty clear. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. The George Washington story, the rocks, uh, all of those were strong, yes. those were really strong yes. illustrations. Yeah. Uh, how did she involve us? The questions. Oh, question. questions. Lots of very effective Q and A. Mm -hmm. okay. Responses. She, you have a confidence that says, "I trust that that someone in this audience is going to respond to what I'm thinking or what I'm talking about, and it's going to give me back something that's going to help others." Yeah. I, I think it is that I. I trust that people have gone through some somebody's mm -hmm. suffering and struggling. Yeah, it hasn't everybody? Yeah, even if they don't say it. Mm -hmm. I also kind of sense that she was very experienced. <laughs> she was going through the ropes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. So she she was speaking out personal mm -hmm. dealings. Well, none of us in here are little baby chicks. <laughs> newly hatched. And so we've all uh, been experienced with uh, good things and with chicken hawks. And so we have, we have things that we have endured. I also wanted to say that, uh, that uh, she also showed her knowledge of not just the topic but of the material. Because there were times when she was quoting the material word for word and she wasn't even looking at it. I don't know exactly. If, yes. I don't know yes. if anybody else yes. knows that. Yes. 
Especially when she was talking about leaders get um, yes, yes. control and power yes. over people. Yeah. Which meant <laughs> that you had gone over this material, you knew the material. I mean, you didn't have to be, you know, yeah. you knew. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, what learning styles did you see demonstrated here? Hmm. Body style. How did she use body? By making us go get them. The rocks. Get the rocks, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Also nature. Nature, because that's the rocks. Mm -hmm. I think she what? Did. She used picture, mental picture. Mental picture. What was your mental picture? This, the story. Rolling of logs. The up rolling of logs mm -hmm. and how the commander in chief came to help push. Yep. That was graphic. Mm -hmm. The way she started it was awesome. Yes. I think she used a little self style too. Personal reflection, you know, let's look inside. Um, Very good. Yeah. I think she used a little self style. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Okay. We thank you very much. That was very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my goodness, you just, there we go. You just start setting yourself up for so that. While he's getting ready to start, let everybody go ahead and finish filling out your forms and uh, get them passed around to you on.